Today's the uh, 10th of April, doing a starting test on our Dodge. Uh, outside temperature is about 36, it appears here, on this thermometer. The solar panel that we use for topping off the batteries is covered, which is good. This will give us a good starting indication. And you can see here that our batteries are at about 12 volts. So I'm going to hop in and try to start it and see how she does. The way to start light is out. And you can see now that the battery voltage has gone down to about 12. And we'll turn it over. That worked. 11.4. Obviously, it was a little slow in starting. Here comes the voltage. So the alternators come online 14.27. You see it alternate on and off as it charges the batteries. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it off now. I don't want it to get too warm. Now I'm going to introduce the uh, ultra capacitor. So I'm going to stop this for a moment and go get it. The ultra capacitors have been charging off of my solar panel. I've made a much better fitting here for connecting. The leads and I'm going to take my probes and check the electrodes. So charging the ultra capacitors on the solar panel we're at 13.46 volts you can see they're just clipped here and here and connected out to the panel via this connection. Uh, one recommendation was that I put a voltage regulator or a charge controller, I may consider that in the future. So if you have any recommendations for an inexpensive one, I'll probably just go to a solar website or Amazon and find a, a small amperage used for small solar applications. But that was certainly a good recommendation so I don't have to continually monitor this because the open circuit, when the panel is not connected to a load, I'll show you a quick indication of that here. is about 21 volts so I have the potential if I leave this to exceed the rated capacity of these capacitors I think 17.5 is the max voltage so a uh, quick look here too I've got some battery cable the thickest I could find 4 gauge um, at the hard at the auto parts store O'Reilly and what I've done is put a couple of bicycle inner tubes on the ends of these so that uh, my wife or someone unknowingly makes contact as it's sitting here charged up on the bench. Alright, quick view of my setup before I get after it. 12.19 with one battery connected and I'll show you that setup here now. Here's the ultra capacitor setup. The temperature has now dropped to about 30 degrees and that's probably just that the sun's blocked. Live terminal is insulated from the existing battery sitting here. And then the other battery here, again isolated. So the, the second battery in the two battery pair on this starting system, this one you can see is still firmly connected, is um, isolated out of. 
and I'm going to connect this in parallel by way of these leads connected to the ultra capacitor bank going here to the negative and then you can see here this one going to the positive so I've got this bit of copper pipe that eventually will take the place of these electrodes here on the battery as I place this in the battery carrier down here and I sized out outer and inner diameter subtracted away the missing piece from the pipe and that bit of copper um, represents about a a um, single otter zero size cable when I look at the cross-sectional area um, so it should be able to carry the current just fine and then I've put some epoxy around the interface between the copper and the lead hopefully so there's no galvanic action or corrosion but um, again this is kind of experimental um, as you can see there's some galvanic action or corrosion going on here I think I'm saying that correctly and so I'm trying to prevent that so next I'm going to connect this um, I suspect that the voltage will even out at about probably 12 and a half or so as the capacitor bank feeds a bit of the battery and then we'll uh, try to give it a start and see if there's any difference so I'm going to set the camera in the truck starter up glow plug lights are out Seem to start up just fine. There's 12, there's the alternator kicking on. 13. 13 volts. Back to 11. I'll leave the stick shift out of the way. There's the alternator again. I get cut out, back on. So it seems to be at full charge now. I'm gonna let it idle for a bit here, just so we can kind of observe the behavior with that ultra capacitor in there. Twelve point seven to fourteen. And I think that's the alternator kicking off. Alternator back on. Here's the voltage indicator in the truck, just over fourteen. Let's take a look at the connections again so you can see what I was doing. So I've got the positive of the ultra capacitor bank connected to the positive terminal on the starter. You see that little bit of tubing is isolating the existing battery. There's an air gap between the ground on the existing battery. So they're not making contact there. I'm in the ground going through my jumper cables. I'll try to do a better setup than this, but this is what I could cobble together right now. And then obviously the first battery connected. There's the alternator. Sounds like it's running just fine. And I can just make out one LED coming up on the ultra capacitor bank here. And 
And for reference, there's the temperature, about 30 degrees. The solar panel, for those curious, is out of the picture. The leads on the solar panel connect right here in the battery cable. Um, this, sorry, this black one. And then over here, it's a red one. And they go through this charge controller in here and route up underneath the hood. And the solar panel is still covered. It's under the snow there. So the solar panel has nothing to do with this particular test. All we're showing here is that the, the Dodge started on one battery in parallel with this ultra capacitor bank. That was it. And if I had to compare the two, um, I would say that it started faster the second time with the ultra capacitor bank. Had a little more oomph and I didn't have to keep the key in nearly as long. But I also was out here about 15 minutes ago and had already started the truck. So sounds like it's running a bit smoother and it may have equalized the uh, battery in the capacitor bank. So it's not having to alternate charge and rest cycles. Let's see what the indications in the cab are. Showing 14.2 volts, pretty steady. And just over 14 on the vehicle in dash. And it seems to be idling really nicely. So I think once the capacitor and the battery got fully charged, then the, uh, the roughness cut out. So I'm gonna shut it off. And we'll see where we're at. That particular cigarette lighter cuts out. But it's the best one to see with the camera, so. I'm gonna take the key out. So we don't want the buzzing. And put the indicator up here. So with the idle, the vehicle off, now that we've just put some charge voltage into the battery, and you can see this indicator, when it senses the alternator coming on, you saw that little circle in the previous couple of minutes, and now it um, should settle down to probably around 12 and a half or so. We'll see. I don't know, with that capacitor bank on there, um, it's anyone's guess, but I'd say that particular test is successful. If I keep doing this stuff, then uh, um, I'll certainly try to post videos. Um, next step is to probably take some of this carpet padding and I've got in the back here, I found on the side of the road, and wrap it around the ultra capacitor bank, put it in here in place of where this battery is. Uh, strap it down somehow and um, drive it around town for a few days and uh, see how that goes before we take it to our remote space. So this uh, video is for those out here trying the same. I'll post the links up on YouTube and uh, probably on my blog connectingoffthegrid.com. So feel free to make comments and uh, as always if you're discovering something better or otherwise then, then please communicate to us. Here's a a bit of a further away of the setup and I'm not selling anything here so certainly no tricks yeah it looks messy but that's simply because this is the situation that I've got to work with so that's all for now thanks for watching so I've just gone around and tested the voltage um, this is after the test trucks not running this is showing 12.4 in the cigarette lighter in the truck, 12.37. Um, I just tested this battery that wasn't a part of the test and got 12.6 with my multimeter. I tested this battery here and get about 12.47. And then testing the capacitor bank. This is super tricky with two hands. 
but let me see if I can get it for you. It's showing 13.12. Hopefully, you got that. So, um, yeah, the capacitor bank's holding a bit more voltage, which I would expect. Um, and the reason I would expect that, for those of you that are wondering, shouldn't they be, all be the same or at least close? And then here I'm testing this battery that was out of the picture. And it's at 12.6. So we would expect this battery that was out of it to be the highest because it wasn't a part of the preheat on the second start attempt with the ultra capacitor in parallel. So it would have just been sitting here at what its resting charge was after the first startup with both batteries in parallel a normal start. We would expect this battery to be a little bit net low but not a lot because it was involved with the start but had some idle time to recharge. And we would expect this to be the highest. It would pretty much maintain the, I would expect it would pretty much maintain the balance of the peak voltage between this battery and these capacitors. So if we saw a peak voltage um, under the charging condition of 14, I think it was, 14.2 during the test, and I disconnected immediately at that point, I would expect this to be at 14.2, and then I would expect this battery to slowly decay down to about 12.6 or, or somewhere thereabouts, and that's as the the uh, energy in the electrolyte seeps into and saturates the lead cylinders. So it makes sense to me that these, the battery and the ultra capacitor would be of different voltages. If I were to reconnect them again, the ultra capacitor would probably bring up the battery a bit and they'd balance out and equalize each other. But because batteries and capacitors behave differently, there's a bit of a, a lag in charging voltage. Batteries won't hang out at 14 volts, even though that's their charge voltage. They'll settle down to 13 or something below that. So everything appeared normal. Now I've got my setup disconnected. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reconnect my rubber boots on the ends there for safety. But uh, so far a successful test. I'm also gonna clear all my tools out of the way and um, reconnect the old system as a final indicator. Temperature is pretty low now. We're down in the 20s. Shows about 26, I think. So pretty good test for cold starting of our Dodge Ram 98 Cummins 12 valve turbo diesel. Thanks for watching.